Okay, so I posted a video of this like talking robot thing on my Instagram and a bunch of people seem to be fixated on the text to speech and the speech to text functionality. So today we're gonna go over uh, doing that with this amazing plugin for Unity that Ping AK9 made. Start roll. Initializing roll protocol. So this tutorial isn't necessarily going to be in AR, but I think voice interaction is a great method of interaction for AR. So basically he made an interface for the native uh, text-to-speech and speech-to-text functionality on Android and iOS for use in Unity. So yeah, let's get this party started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is clone or download this repo by ping AK9. And so once you unzip that, uh, you can open up this folder and you can see he's got the Android Studio project in here and then this is actually the folder that we want. This is the Unity project. So um, let's just rename this uh, voice text. And let's just drag this onto our desktop. Now, if you wanted to, um, we can delete. We're not going to use that Android Studio project, so let's get that out of here for now. So if, for example, you wanted to pull this into an existing project, you would click on the Assets folder and you would just pull in the plugins and this speech-to-text folder and put this in the Assets folder of your existing project. But uh, for now, we're just going to open this project in Unity. So go to Unity Hub and then uh, we're going to have to add this to the list. So we're going to find this voice text open that up and click it to open in Unity. Okay, so now that this is open, let's first do this. Let's go to File, Build Settings, and let's switch our platform to Android or iOS, whatever you prefer to work with. Okay, cool. Now, let's remove this from the Build Settings. So right-click, remove, uh, remove that scene, and then let's go to Assets, and let's create um, a new scene, and let's just call this Main. Oops. Okay, main, and let's double click this and then go to file, build settings, and then add open scenes. So our main scene is in the build now. And let's go to player settings, and then let's just change the package name to hmm, whatever, com dot your name dot whatever this is going to be called. So we'll call it voice text. But you can make that whatever you want. And then I think that's all we're going to need to change here. Let's check out the iOS settings, see if anything needs changed in here. Everything looks pretty good. Okay, cool. And then over over on here, let's make this a uh, development build so that way we can get our debug logs and we can see if anything goes wrong. Okay, beautiful. So that looks good. So now let's go into our main scene and um, what we're gonna do here is we're going to create our own basically sample scene for this plugin. So if you go into the speech text folder, samples, he does already have a sample scene, so you could add this to the build settings and build this out and do your testing or whatever, but I think uh, to get familiar with this, we're just gonna build our own sample scene. So go back to our main scene and on our camera, <clears throat> let's see, we wanna have a skybox. So let's set this projection to perspective and then window rendering light settings, I think, and then skybox material, let's go default skybox. Cool. And then let's add a directional light to this scene. Right click, directional light. Beautiful. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two cubes in this scene. And then when you click down on the cube, it's gonna like start recording the speech. And when you uh, click up, it's gonna stop recording the speech. And we're gonna do that for speech to text and text to speech. So. Uh, first of all, we need somewhere to display the text result from our uh, speech to text. So let's uh, create a UI canvas. And this is where we're gonna put our text. So change canvas scaler to scale with screen size. And then right click on this, let's create a UI image. And then let's anchor this to the bottom and stretch it to the full width. So we'll change this to like, 50, no, we'll go 75, 75, that looks good. And then just bring the Y position up. So it's just at the bottom of the screen. Actually, let's change the anchor on this, so. Okay, anchor should be zero, and then zero, that'll bring it there, and then we can just move it up. Well, we'll move it up 75 so that everything is equal. Okay, cool, that looks good. And now we need to just put our text inside there, so right click on the image, create UI text, and then let's uh, align this to center. Let's do best fit, change min size to zero, max to like a thousand. And then we want this to stretch the whole width of this image, except for we'll give it like a padding of maybe like 50 on the left and right. And then let's do 
10 on the top and bottom. So now you can see if we um, type whatever in here, it'll just stay fitting in this box. So let's just put in here listening for right now. Okay, cool. So we got our text, that's looking good. Now we need two cubes in here. So let's create um, our first cube and let's bring this down. Uh, let's make it, can we make it two? Is that too big? Now that looks okay. Yeah. So let's put one cube here and actually, well, we'll duplicate it and we'll put the other cube positive on the X. Uh, let's go 1.3. Uh, 1.4 cool okay so we got two cubes let's make them different colors just so we can distinguish between the two so we'll create a new folder and we'll call this materials why is my caps lock on okay materials cool so open this up and let's create a new material and let's make a green material and we'll change the albedo to green and then command D to duplicate that Command D, okay. And let's make a blue material. Change the albedo to blue, cool. And then let's just, wait, why did I, what? Okay, apparently I named those backwards. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is more what we want. Yeah, cool. So we got a blue and a green and they're named correctly. Okay, so. Drag the blue material onto the first cube, drag the green material onto the second cube. Beautiful. Now, that's everything we really need in our scene, but we need to be able to call functions on mouse down and on mouse up of these cubes. So what we can do in that situation is we can make a script to do so. So let's create a scripts folder. So let's right click in here and create a new C -sharp script and we'll call this click handler. So double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so what we're going to do in here is we are going to have basically an on mouse down. So go void on mouse down and then void on mouse up. Okay, so we got these two functions. We can just remove this private here. And then in order for the on mouse down and on mouse up events to be called on the script, uh, the object that the script is on has to have a collider. So we created these cubes. By default, they come with a box collider, but I think good practice here would just be to require component type of, uh, and then we can just do generic uh, Unity collider. That way we can guarantee the script has a collider and these functions are gonna get called. So what we can do in each one for now is we can do debug.log, um, we'll say down on this one, and then we'll put up in the next one. And now the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna create two public Unity events and we're gonna call those on mouse down and on mouse up. So at the top, we just need to go using Unity engine.events and then we'll create two events. So public, um, let's just call it up event. Oops. So public Unity event and we'll call the first one up event. And then we can just duplicate this and we can go down event. And then inside each of these functions on mouse down, we're gonna do down event dot invoke. And then on mouse up, up event dot invoke. Cool. Now let's put this on our cubes and test it out. So back in the editor on our cubes, if you highlight one of these and then go to the inspector, we can add component uh, click handler. And you'll see there's two events here. We're not gonna add anything to those yet. And then go to this other cube and also add the click handler. And now if we click play, we should get our up and down debug logs to show in the console here. So down, up, oops. Did I not, oops make this say up. All right. Okay. So our scene is pretty much set up. Now we just need to get this plugin working. So first of all, let's right click and create an empty game object and rename this speech to text. And then on this, we're going to put the speech to text uh, script from the plugin. So a couple things are going on here. First of all, 
this game object needs to be named exactly speech to text like we have it typed here because if you've dealt with plugins in Unity before, a lot of them use send message to get a callback from a plugin. And when you use send message, you call to a game object that is named something very specific, and then you call a function uh, that's on a script on that game object. So it's very important that this is named exactly how it is here. And then uh, we're gonna uncheck show pop-up Android. Um, if you do show this native pop-up box on Android, when you're doing uh, speech to text, it will background the app. So for example, if you're using this with an AR plugin, for example, um, and that native pop-up box comes up, you're going to background Unity and lose tracking. So that is what we definitely don't want. So definitely uncheck that. And then now we need to do the same thing, create another empty game object for text to speech. And as you can imagine, text to speech, we need to put the script from the plugin onto there. So that is looking good. And now the last game object we're gonna need, just create an empty one, and we're just gonna call this speech controller. We're going to create a script that's gonna interface with the uh, plugin here. So actually let's go back to the project and in our scripts folder, create a new C sharp script and call this, uh, you know what? Let's call this voice controller actually. Call this voice controller and then we can rename this if you want. Okay, so let's put this voice controller object on here and then open this up in Visual Studio. Okay, so let's delete the start and update functions. And then the first thing that we're gonna need is, um, we need to do, we need to call a setup function that's on these scripts. So actually, these spe the speech to text script and text to speech, let's open these up in Visual Studio as well. So speech to text and text to speech. Let's open these up so we have these as a reference, okay? So the first thing you're gonna notice about these scripts is that they have a setting function that takes a language, a string language code, okay? So first we're going to go um, const string lang code, and we're gonna set this equal to en-us for English language, sorry. en-us, yeah, cool, looks good. And then we're going to go void, uh, I don't know, we'll just call it setup. And that's going to take a string code. And then inside this function, we need to set up both scripts. So we'll go text to speech dot instance dot setting. And we'll pass in this code. And then I think this is like pitch and rate. We're just going to set these to one. And then we need to do the same thing for speech to text dot instance, and we're gonna pass in the same language code. Cool. All right, so that looks good. Now let's make a start function and actually call that. So we'll go setup and we'll pass in lang code. Okay, so now everything is set up. The other thing that we're gonna need before I forget is we need to do serialize field, and we're going to, we're gonna need our text UI element that we're going to put our speech to text result on. So let's go um, text. Oh, you know what we need to do at the top using unity engine.ui. And then we should be able to get that text and we'll just call this UI text. And we're gonna use this later. Okay, so the first thing, let's make all of our functions for text to speech. So let's make a region and we'll just call it text to speech. And then let's go end region. You don't really have to do this, but I think it's good. I think it's good practice. Okay, so the first function that we're gonna need, let's make a public void and let's go start speaking. And then we're going to need to pass in the message that we want the plugin to speak. So from here, we can just call text to speech dot instance dot start, I think it's called start speak. Yeah, start speak and we can pass in this message. Cool. Now, I don't know if we're gonna use this or not, but there also is uh, a function in that plugin for stop speaking. So let's just make something for that now, text to speech dot instance dot stop speak. Now the other thing that might be useful to use with the text to speech is uh, the callbacks for on speak start and on speak finish because uh, that would allow you to start and stop an animation, for example. 
So let's just go on speak start. And then we'll just do debug.log. Um, I don't know, let's go talking started maybe. And then let's copy this function. And then we'll just go on speak stop. And then we'll just go talking stopped. Okay, cool. So that should be all the stuff we need for speech to text. So now let's make another region <coughs> and let's call this um, speech to text. And then end region. Okay, so in here, we're gonna first need a function for uh, start listening. So public void, let's call start listening. So we're gonna call speech text.instance.start recording, I think it's called, yeah. So this will start listening for the speech input, and then we're gonna duplicate this. And same thing, but stop listening. And I think it's called stop recording, cool. Now in here, we need to get a callback when the um, native plugins get the speech result. So let's go void uh, on final speech result. And that's gonna give us a string, which is the result. And all we're gonna do here is just set our UI text um, dot text to the result. And then there's something on Android that I find useful. There's on uh, partial speech result. It only works on Android, not iOS, but you can get the result as the user is speaking. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll just set our UI text um, to this partial result. Okay, so now we've got pretty much all the functions that we need. So back on start, what we can do is now um, register all these callbacks that we created here. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, if we go to speech to text, you can see that there's this on result callback. Okay, so first we need to register that. So we can go, speech to text dot instance dot on result callback and we can set that equal to our on final speech result function that we created now the other thing is like i said only on android do you have this partial result callback so what we're going to have to do here is um if unity android we'll put a compiler flag for if unity android and that way on ios um, we will not register this callback. So we can also do speech to text dot instance dot, uh, I think it's called on partial results callback. Yes. We'll set that equal to on partial speech result. Cool. Now we need to register our functions for the text to speech. So text to speech dot instance. And then I think this is called on, let's see, text to speech. Okay, on start callback and on done callback. Where's my autocomplete dot? On start callback equals on speak start. And then let's do the same thing for on done callback equals on speak stop. Cool. And we have everything, I think, set up and ready to go. Oh, the one other thing. Okay, so on iOS, the first time that you would say click the cube to do the speech to text, you would get the microphone permission. Um, on Android, that does not seem to happen. So we need to make a function for void check permission. And we need to check permission on Android. So let's go using unity engine.android. And then down here, let's do another compile flag um, if unity Android. So here we first want to check if the user has authorized the microphone permission. So if uh, permission dot has user authorized permission permission dot microphone 
So if they have not authorized the microphone permission yet, we want to ask for microphone permission. So permission.request, user permission, and permission.microphone again. And that should handle uh, populating the dialog box on Android to get the user's permission for the microphone. So we just need to call this function. Let's do this down here. Let's do this last. Let's call check permission. And I believe that is all we need. Okay, so now back in Unity, we just need to hook up our functions to these cubes. So if you highlight both cubes, we can add um, up and down events to each one. And let's drag our voice controller object into both of these slots, okay? So then on the first cube, this will be our text-to-speech cube. Or sorry, let's do speech-to-text first. So we're going to want to go on the down event, we're going to go voice controller start listening. And then on the up event, we want voice controller stop listening. Now on this second cube, yeah, you know what? We'll put start speaking on both events. And then on the down event, when we click down, let's say hello. And on the up event, let's say goodbye. Okay, so the last thing we need to do before we can make a build is go to our voice controller and we have to drag in our UI text. So canvas, image, text, drag our UI text into there so that our speech to text functionality can fill it out. And I believe we are now ready to make a build. So first, let's go and make an Android build and make sure everything works. Okay, so here is our Android build. And once that loads, the first thing it should do is ask for microphone permission. Cool. So let's click allow and then let's go Hello. Testing, one, two, three. Cool. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. Okay, so as you can see, this works pretty well, and we're about to see that it does not work quite as well on iOS. Now, for iOS, there's a couple different pitfalls that I want to go through right now. So switch your platform to iOS, and um, if you go to the GitHub, the first issue that I ran into when I was first testing this was that... Uh, I was on an older version of iOS and the uh, speech to text functionality just did not work. So if you go into the issues, you can see this uh, error audio engine. And you can see that there is an Apple thread that talks about the speech to text and text to speech not working on particular versions of iOS. So just make sure that you're up to date on the most recent version of iOS. So at the time of recording this, I am on um, iOS 13.4.1. Now, the second thing that you'll see is uh, down in the readme here, it talks about adding these frameworks and adding these permissions when you're configuring this project in Xcode. I did not see that you actually had to do that stuff. It looks like um, the plugin's been updated um, and the readme has not. So if you look in this speech to text folder uh, editor, if you open up this um, build post processor, you can see that he's actually um, adding the necessary stuff to the info.plist and already adding the uh, specific frameworks uh, to the iOS build. So you shouldn't actually have to do that. You should just be able to uh, click build and run and have it work in Xcode. Okay, so here's our iOS build. Uh, it's asking for speech recognition permission. Click OK, everything should load. And then the first time you click this, it should ask for microphone permission. Click OK, hello. Okay, that works. So one thing you'll notice is on this part, Hello. Goodbye. you actually have to hold down pretty long until the speech is finished before it will start again. So you may want to do some checks for that inside the code. But a couple other pitfalls for iOS, you want to make sure that your mute button is not off or this won't work. And then the other thing you need to do is make sure that in your settings you have Siri enabled or this also will not work. So Siri and search, you have to have Siri enabled up here or else you'll have issues. Okay, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Uh, hopefully this video helped you guys out and uh, definitely let me know down in the comments what you guys wanna see in the next one. So with that, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.